Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? It's me, Mr. Four Caps Scaler. Uh, so, I've been getting a lot of questions, actually, regarding this video game. Uh, sure, there's always questions regarding the television, right? What HDMI cable? What about the OLED? What about this? Uh, but uh, some people have been asking about Flight Simulator. Like, how did you install Flight Simulator, and how did you get it to work? Well, first and foremost, you need to understand that in order for you to download 95 gigabytes onto your hard drive from a Sobo Microsoft Flight Simulator headquarters server you're gonna need to have a stable stable internet while you are downloading meaning you cannot have any drops if you have a drop of internet there's gonna be an error that says uh, debug C499 so what I would recommend that you do make sure that everything else is disconnected in your household and that only your uh, computer that you're going to be downloading this game is connected to that modem and only have that computer in duration of that time while you're downloading to be connected so that way there's no bottleneck that, that way there's no other devices being connected to it it worked for me it should work for you because I was able to install this game on multiple uh, computers. I think all three of my computers I was able to install this game. But the whole purpose of this video is going to be for me to give you what I think is the most feasible, the most desirable sweet spot to run this game. First and foremost, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is a very demanding game. Okay, in order for you to run this game properly, maxed out in all the settings, even at 1440p, you're looking at least 2080 Super or 2080 Ti just to get that, you know, 1440p ultra settings, 60 FPS, a stable, smooth experience. Now, if you're somebody like me who doesn't have 2080 Ti or 2080 Super and you got something like 2060 Super with 16 gigs of RAM, i7 processor you know ninth generation stuff like that if you have that type of a computer then i would recommend these settings uh this is what i would go with i would go with uh 1920 by 1080 uh and then select the high end another important thing to keep in mind is your rendering scaling uh, i wouldn't have my rendering scaling running all the way to 100. Uh, i keep it at 90. Because at 100, you're still trying to get that best possible, clearest rendering. And due to the uh, such a high demand that this software has, uh, I don't think you're going to have that smooth of experience. If you're somebody who has 2060 or 2070 or, uh, you know, something lower end. Or if you only have, uh, let's say, for example, uh, 12 gigs of RAM or something like that on your on your uh, motherboard or i5 processor, 7th generation, that's not really that powerful. Okay, maybe something that like 4 cores, it's not even 6 cores. Uh, I, I'm lucky enough to have, you know, 8 cores running, but some people have 4 cores on their CPUs. So I wouldn't have my render rendering scaling all the way to 100. I would leave it at 90 and as you will see having it at 90 it's really going to give you that smooth experience um any aliasing i keep this a taa you don't want to go anything higher than this otherwise it's going to be very demanding terrain level of detail it's at 100 but honestly to to give you that much better boost of performance i would also keep it at um, 90 so I would keep both of these at 90 honestly this is where uh, these people understand this is where really you're gonna be uh, feeling that slowdown it's this right here the render scaling and terrain level of detail so I would keep both of these at 90 uh, terrain vector data I keep it at high because I want Azure to uh, bring that data and render that uh, buildings and, and detail down below to the best possible way. Um, everything else here, I would keep it at high. Object levels of detail, I would also keep this at 90. 
Uh, remember, what we're trying to do here, we're trying to, to, to squeeze the best possible 1080p performance. You know, because uh, if you're a flight simulator, and, and believe me, when you are flying, as you will see, the most important thing is to have that performance and stability. That's the key. Uh, anisotropic filtering, we can keep this at 4. Keep it at 4. Texture super sampling, we can keep it 2 by 2. Remember, again, what we're trying to do, we're trying to squeeze that best possible performance here. So we want to lower some of these settings. The water waves, that's fine. Keep it at high. Shadow maps, 1536. Terrain shadows, 512. That's fine. We can keep that here as well. Everything else else here I would leave on. Uh, light shaft, I would leave it uh, at high. That's fine. Bloom, you can leave it on. Lens correction, you can turn this off. Uh, this will also help you squeeze a little bit better performance. So anyway, let's apply and save. Um, and let me show you just uh, how it runs. And let's resume. And you will see that uh, performance will be much, much better here. You clearly can see 60 FPS running much smoother now. Look at the shadows, how the shadows are, are moving due to the sun reflection. So everything seems to be running more fluid. Even terrain down there uh, seems to be more fluid and better. And this is what you want, guys. Uh, write these settings down. Uh, because the whole idea of, of enjoying this game is to have that constant, smooth experience. I mean, what is the point of having all that detail if you can enjoy it? The idea is to have a smooth experience so that way you can enjoy it. So we're flying in the Cessna here. We're in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, beautiful place. We're going to go outside a little bit, look outside, look at the uh, the scenery outside here a little bit. Let's also close down the map here. You see, it just looks better, man. Look at there's a stadium over there. You see, it's just much smoother. And it looks more real, right? Doesn't it? It looks more real. Because you don't have any slowdowns. You don't have any uh, obstacles that's going to slow down that experience. Especially when there's a rain. You know, if you truly want to experience the rain, you got to, you know... For example, if I, put a, if I go to the weather and we put uh, rain, let's say we go and uh, we put rain... Uh, right here. Hold on. You'll see it. You see, it still runs great. No issues. Smooth. Or if we put broken clouds, or let's say put uh, broken clouds. Few clouds here and there. Still great. Or uh, broken clouds. Here we go. Broken clouds, for example. You see? See how smooth it runs now? You can see the clouds clearly, even when you are in the cockpit. Now, there is a data loading. Uh, this is the internet data that it's loading it, getting the, uh, the weather data. That sometimes happens, depending on your internet. But for the most part, this is smooth. Look at this. And I've been tweaking this game left and right. I've been trying all sorts of different settings, man. Uh, for you guys, trying to give you the best possible um, experience. And, and honestly, uh, this is the best that I can uh, that I can that I can manage that I can think of. In my honest opinion. I've seen people run this game uh, at like uh, 4K, 
I even tried it at 4K, but it, you're really getting a uh, crappy frame rate, uh, and it's just not good. Perf let me tell you something. I, I have come to re realization, uh, and I know it's going to sound kind of uh, cheesy, but having that... Every game should run at 60 FPS. Guys, every game should run at 60 FPS. You know, uh, to truly appreciate the fluidity of the game, the gameplay, it really everything should be nothing less than 60. Uh, and with these new graphics cards like 380 and 390, I think we're gonna we're gonna start enjoying that standard of just 60 FPS everything. Uh, imagine like for example 8K. Imagine running this on a 390 in 8K with 60 FPS. Imagine that insanity and how realistic that's gonna look on your television, especially with the uh, high dynamic range with 8K, 33 million pixel, and just how crazy that's gonna be. Let's go below the clouds a little bit here just to get that uh, realistic uh, look and feel to it. I'm gonna show you my settings again before we end this video. I want you guys to, to look at it. Here, we'll, we'll, we'll just kind of shave the clouds from the, from the bottom here. So you guys can look at it a little bit better. Now this is obviously for a single uh, 1080p monitor. Uh, and if you're running a 240 hertz uh, monitor, yeah, you're going to benefit even more greatly. There's also a way for you to use the dual 1080p monitor. I think you can still achieve this type of a performance even with a 30, uh, 3840 by 1080. I think you can still achieve uh, this performance. I think it's doable. Uh, here, let's uh, try to uh, go below these clouds a little bit. Let's uh, dive down. Try to escape them. Here we go. That's it. That's better. You see how smooth that is? How more fluid it looks? How better it looks? By the way, I love North Carolina. Uh, I'm really thinking about moving to North Carolina. It's such a beautiful place. I'm talking about the Northwestern Carolinas. Not the East Carolinas. Uh, the, the Northwestern Carolinas. You know, like Asheville. And uh, Blue Ridge Parkway, stuff like that. Yeah, this is much better. Clearly, much, much better. And it looks more fluid. It looks more real. And that's what you want from this game. I mean, uh, if you're a flight simulator, this is what majority of the pilots will want so if you're a pilot and you're kind of like looking for the best possible experience and you your computer is not all that high-end um, I think you can achieve this on a 1070 honestly uh, even if you have a laptop that's 1070 uh, but you have to also keep in mind your laptop is gonna be running really hot and has to be plugged into the power cord Yeah, this is great. Beautiful performance here. Looks great. Here, maybe we can get a little bit closer to the clouds. Right there. So there you have it, uh, guys. Uh, I hope this helps. I'm trying to like give you guys my opinions on it and what's the best performance. And I think honestly, this is uh, the most 
the most balanced way for you to enjoy this game. You're not sacrificing on the graphics, you're still getting great graphics, but at the same time you're also getting a great performance. So I'm trying to find a good balance between the performance and the graphics. Uh, for those of you who don't have a high-end PCs, you know, I, I, I don't consider myself having a high-end because I don't have a high-end PC, you know. So this is really a video for those of you who don't have a high-end PC and you got something mediocre, kind of close to a premium, uh, and it's not a high-end, okay? So uh, try these settings, let me know what you think. Uh, if you want me to do a video on a, on a dual 240 hertz Alienware 1080p uh, dual monitors with a 30, uh, 3840 by 1080 resolution, um, I can do that video as well. But for right now, this is just for those of you who are using a single 1080p. And trust me, this looks even better with a 240 hertz monitor. When you connect this to a 240 hertz monitor with a G-Sync, one millisecond respond time with a display port, uh, you're gonna have it. You're gonna have even more, even more better uh, experience here. Hundred percent. Look how real that looks, man. It looks great. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. I know it's 16 minutes here. I went a little bit more than usual. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope this video helps. Thank you for watching.